Carbide is a phrase that's been thrown around quite a lot lately in the power tool accessory market. But it seems like there isn't a whole lot of clarity in what it actually means and what it actually does. What are the advantages of having a carbide accessory? Well, I'd like to clear that up for you. So, carbide. Carbide refers to a family of metal alloys that have had carbon added to them to increase hardness and heat resistance. It is literally that simple, video over, thanks for what, no. Whilst that is the essence of it, carbide is a family of metal alloys, the most common of which is steel, where you've got iron with various amounts of carbon added to it, carbon, carbon, to increase properties such as hardness. What we're referring to here are various other carbide alloys. These have carbon added to them to increase hardness and heat resistance. Heat resistance referring to degradation as the part heats up. So what are the applications of carbide? Well, it's, it's mainly cutting tools. I say mainly cutting tools, it's, it's only cutting tools. The range of applications though within cutting tools goes from your circular saw blades to your large SDS bits, chisels, Recip saw blades, I, 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 you can see the rest of them, I could keep going. These are not entirely made of carbide, but instead have little tips welded on. And that's because if the entire tool was to be made out of carbide, it would be far too brittle to be used in any useful application. A tool would basically just shatter. Instead, you have your carbide tip impregnated into a high speed or tool steel body. So carbide as a material is made of three primary ingredients. Let's make us an alloy cake. Don't eat it. The first two are the base metal and the carbon. These are bound together to form a compound, which is incredibly, incredibly hard, and which is actually doing the most, the majority of the cutting work. Next, you have the binder material. Now the binder material's job is to encapsulate those harder particles and to add a little bit more toughness into it because as mentioned carbide is incredibly brittle particles of the carbide compound are added to the binder metal through a process of sintering now what happens here is the cobalt the binder metal is heated to its melting point which is significantly lower to that of the carbide as you remember i said earlier creating a carbide compound drastically increases its heat resistance and melting point. So the cobalt binder metal is melted, the carbide particles are then added in. These mix into this liquid, which is then hardened into shape, and form carbide alloy. Being that carbide is just so brittle, this binder material really adds to add a bit of flexibility and a bit of toughness into it so you can get just a little bit extra out of your tool. Not like that, don't make it weird, please. So I've said a lot about what the carbide part means, but carbide actually only refers to the suffix of the compound. Suffix being the end part of the word. The prefix, which is what we're interested in here, is what's generally left off, but is just as important. When it comes to carbides, there are traditionally three different base methods used. So there are threes in carbides for some reason. You have tungsten, which is the oldest of all carbides, which was first formed in 1927. Ask your grandparents. Um, don't know why they would know though. It's a bit of a weird niche topic. Anyway, whereas the two modern counterparts are titanium and tantalum. These are both harder and harder wearing than their tungsten counterpart. The carbide cutting component is impregnated into the larger tool just as graphite is added into your pencil. If you were to try and draw the simple graphite out of your pencil, it would snap pretty much immediately. And so we add the wooden coating on the outside to increase its toughness and durability. Exactly the same principles apply. You have a carbide cutting tip, your pencil lead, and your high speed or tool steel body. 
the wood. It is worth noting, though, that carbide isn't without its faults. And whilst being very, very temperature resistant, it's not very good at dealing with thermal shock and is susceptible to shattering and cracking if taken from an incredibly high temperature to a low one. This is why we say that you should always keep a constant cooling on your tools, as if you were to dip your cutting bit into water to cool it off after cutting, it would likely damage it. Furthermore, carbide particles are incredibly hazardous to your lungs. So if you are sharpening a carbide tipped bit, be careful to wear breathing protection. Now, take care of yourself, carbide all of the things. Um, if you want to pick up any carbide accessories, go ahead and get that from toolup.com. That's us. If you found this video useful, please let us know. If you didn't, just keep it to yourself. And if you have any other questions, feel free to ask down below. We'd love to help you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.